Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. A complex is a core pattern of emotions, memories, perceptions, and wishes in the personal unconscious, organized around a common theme, such as power or status. Does that sound complex? Allow me to shed more light on things. My advocacy today is called Africa's Wakanda Complex, Kill It With Fire. Some years back, an African country unexpectedly lost its dictator, triggering a bloody succession battle between rival factions vying for control. Peace was only restored when the dictator's son defeated the rebels and assumed power. His first act in office was to take control of the country's sole economic lifeline, a crude natural resource, which he used to make himself incredibly wealthy and powerful, after which he stuffed all key state appointments with his family and kinsmen. If this story sounds like something you vaguely remember, that's because you probably do. The country was called Wakanda, and it made over $1.2 billion for Walt Disney in 2018. You probably also remember parts of this story from the real places across Africa where they have played out, including the Democratic Republic of Congo, Togo, Sierra Leone, Liberia, Nigeria, Central African Republic, South Sudan, Angola, and many other places. The entire geopolitical story of the post-colonial African states is basically that of a never-ending struggle by individuals and factions to control and partake in its, in its natural resource extraction. I call it the Wakanda Complex. I define the Wakanda complex as a state of political and economic consciousness that exclusively and obsessively revolves around the alleged mineral wealth of Africa. In the fictional country of Wakanda, the vibranium is more important than food, clothing, shelter, and even Wakandans themselves. Vibranium is what gives the Wakandans their technology, their health, and all their global leverage. Indeed, without his vibranium suits and his special vibranium-infused drink, King Chaka himself is a weak nobody. This is strikingly similar to how African people and African governments think of their economies today. We have also seen that map of Africa demarcated along its political boundaries with each country labeled with its chief natural resource exports. So Nigeria with an oil barrel, the Ivory Coast with a cocoa sack, Botswana with a diamond mine. And Africans are probably the only people on earth who do not immediately recognize this map as a huge insult. It quite literally says that the value of our continent lies exclusively in what is buried under it, never mind the one billion plus human beings living on it. The US is the world's largest oil producer, but no one would ever think of representing its 320 million people on a map with an oil barrel, because America is so much more than oil wells in Texas and New Mexico. Africans, however, suffering from this Wakanda complex, which is really a post-colonial inferiority complex, are happy to spend their whole lives doing nothing other than jostling for access to a share of this mining and, and extraction pie. Now, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is not bound by real-world economic rules, allows a tiny African dictatorship running a single commodity, centrally planned autarky economy to somehow become fabulously wealthy and highly developed. Out here in the real world, however, national wealth is not a function of what resources lie under the ground. All of these resources, in fact, have no intrinsic value whatsoever. They are objectively worthless. A diamond is just a hard piece of carbon. Crude oil is just sludge. The only value whatsoever that these things have is whatever the industrial economy located in Europe, Asia, and North America decides to ascribe to them. It is an everlasting buyer's market, and that is how capitalism works. Moreover, a diamond can now be created in a lab. Fossil fuels are going extinct. If Africa insists on trying to be a continent full of standalone Wakanda economies, instead of pursuing intra-regional trade integration and research and development, I hope we all understand that the poverty we are currently experiencing will continue up to our 10th generation and beyond. 
And if you take nothing else away from what I've said today, let me sum everything up in one simple sentence. Africa's biggest economic opportunity is and should always be the human beings that live on Africa's soil, not the vibranium buried under it. Death to Wakanda. Um, I am completely in perfect stimulacrum, like uh, Bayamo described it, mm -hmm. with you on this. Um, and, and so on, that's why you have um, leaders who you have uh, leaders who can't even think within the box, not to talk of thinking outside the box, you know, parading themselves as uh, rulers all over Africa. Uh, and that's why um, they are so happy to be described, you know, by what's buried under the sun, uh, under the soil, you know, the oil. Mm -hmm. Take oil out of Nigeria. Most of these leaders who are jostling to lead us will have be out of this country mm -hmm. because they can't think outside the box. If you, if, Take, take uh, um, some states, for example, without resources from the center, they won't have governors. The governors are surviving because there's money coming from the center, which is the oil revenue. Take that out, nobody will want to vie for that office. And, and, and so, the earlier we begin to drum it into the mind and the, 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 the sense of our, of our young ones, the better for us, especially you know, the most annoying part for me is not those that school here, the ones that they take abroad to go school. And then you come back, you repeat the yes. same cycle Absolutely. that your parents, you know, your education is wasted. Yeah. And, and so the earlier we realize that human capital development is the key, is the bedrock of any nation, that human capital development can take, can turn water to steel. Exactly. It can turn air to bread. But without that, you'll just be chasing shadows and you continually, perpetually remain poor. I'm, I'm, thumbs up. Yes, absolutely. I mean, human capital is really where we need to be going. And like David rightly said, you know, America won't be represented by oil barrels or whatever. It is their human capital because they have invested heavily in education. Now, I know Liberty pointed out oh, that you're upset with uh, those that go abroad and then come back and, you know, and then just carry on in the same cycle. But you see, it is quite frustrating for those that have gone abroad. When you come back, you discover that you're either too um, educated for the system, i.e. they're not going to pay you what you're really worth. Um, and then you look at it and you just think, well, you might as well follow um, in, in the footsteps of your parents or whatever, you know, because that's really where the money is going to be made. So it, effectively, um, those that have studied abroad, their education doesn't really amount to so much once they come back here. Um, but absolutely, I think once the government finally realizes that, that it's not about the crude oil, because like David rightly said, if the crude, crude oil isn't refined, it really doesn't have the kind of value. Um, even like our cashew, if we don't refine our cashew, it doesn't have the value. And this is all what human capital um, handles. So I really, really believe that if we don't move on, I mean, if we don't, you know, take the bull by horns and now face education squarely like we ought to, then yes, I mean, we're, we're just going to carry on in the same direction. So I do agree. Death to Wakanda. Absolutely. Well, the, the way I see it, the problem with this country, again, at the beginning of this program, I talked about education and the, and the poor yeah. education in Nigeria. Um, the reason why this country is not working it's essentially because most of the people are not well-educated. That's actually the truth. So when Liberals talks about people who went to school abroad, come back, and they seem to be part of a bad system, I would beg to differ a little bit. Uh, I say a little bit because they are, I can name names of those who are doing what Liberals have said. But I know that what is happening is that a majority of them, like Uche said, um, cannot get themselves to work with the system and they cannot get to control the system even if just for a minute or two and so if we carry on like this it's almost as if going to school abroad is a complete waste of time um, i'm an architect and i know what the, the architectural sphere is in nigeria and i know that a lot of the problem with the architectural sphere in nigeria is the nigerian problem so that means that architects trained in nigeria are a major part of our problem in our profession. And I'm sorry, I don't care who is uh, bothered by what I've just said, because it's the absolute truth. I've, I, 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 I write about these things, and I know it happens okay. in many other sectors. Um, we need to take control 
of our education. We need to stop being ruled by vagabonds and people with no sense at all. And when we do that, there will be an improvement. And going abroad or not going abroad will not be the issue. Don't forget that people go abroad and get past degrees and third class. So the fact that you've just come in from University of Hull doesn't mean anything. Somebody with a first class, for instance, maybe from uh, Ibadan or Benin, uh, he's very good. He just has holes because the university has created holes in him. And he can correct those holes as the years go by. That's, you know, he has more promise than the guy who went and spent thousands of pounds. And, um, May I come in? Yeah. So um, essentially, what I'm, what I'm trying to uh, push for is, I don't actually think it's, it's a case of, I wish it were, a case of, oh, recognize that human capital has value. Because that's an obvious, in a sense, it should be obvious to anybody who wants to do something profitable, that human capital is the treasure. But if you look at what's happening, for example, in the north, and it could be happening anywhere, or if you even go to the east, where you have rich men who refuse to invest in the people around them, and yet they will send their children to the best universities. It tells you that they know the value of human capital, but they're choosing to be, do you say egocentric? They, they're just looking at me, myself, and I. And that can happen. And I'm not necessarily going to defend people who go abroad, because to whom much is given. And in a sense, yes, they, they, do, they do have the greater burden to come back and do something more with the education. So I agree with Libros there. But where, where I also, in a way, distance myself a bit from the Wakanda analogy, even though I know where he's going, is that actually um, the, the Wakanda idea was not necessarily um, followed through. Those who follow, like I was saying to David, off, off air, those who follow the Wakanda story know that it wasn't almost like an imposition. This is somebody who wasn't relying solely on vibranium. He had other things he was, he was drawing strength from. But that's by the by. I, I, I appreciate the metaphor because it helps people appreciate that it's not just about minerals, not just about oil. We need to get away from it. But I wish it were just a case of opening our eyes to the human capital. I think there's something much more sinister that is at work. That, that is why we refuse to acknowledge the human capital. And yeah, we can I actually get in there and say what that sinister is? Or let, or do you want me to I think it's just self-centered, selfish, it's a form of greed, all those things. You know, no, it's a form of control. That, you, you kill yeah. off education so that the people don't know their value or don't know their worth or don't know their history. And therefore, they, they're powerless to even fight against anything. Education is usually the first thing that goes in a, in a country where um, the leaders want to control the masses, especially when the masses are, are so many. So all you want to do is reduce their earning capacity and then basically spoon feed them so that they rely on you. Uh, yeah, that, which is why the last advocate C we had, or one of the recent ones, I was saying, look, let's look for candidates who truly recognize the value of investing in human capital. They're not just using it as a mandate or an electoral promise. They actually yeah. have laid out a plan how we're going to move people out of poverty, how we're going to give people access to scholarships. They, they, you can see them already doing it now, you know, enriching uh, the people around them, the poor, yeah, doing kids' um, welfare. Well, let's not be looking for all these people who are just there to enrich themselves. Fantastic. Um, I think, um, no, very nice points. Um, but, um, David? Uh, just that uh, we should also be aware that the, the general perception that Africa has this huge mineral wealth, it's not necessarily true. China and Australia actually have mineral wealth far in excess of whatever Africa has. So, you know, the Africa is a rich continent thing, it's a bit of a myth. So we need to think of ourselves as a potentially rich continent, not as if a rich continent. If we develop the human capital. Exactly. Yeah. That's correct. Absolutely. We say what we can in the time we have, and then it's over to you. Keep the conversation going on our social media platforms, on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the Advocate. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Until next week, when it's more of the same with more than a touch of hot off the press topics, let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, really it, 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 I don't know what we can do 
if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.